what happens if you go faster than the speed of sound, okay? We already saw what happened if we move, um, we get a Doppler shift that'll shift frequencies, but faster than the speed of sound, we get something that's called a shock wave, okay? Now shock waves can happen when something goes supersonic. Shock waves can happen when there's an explosion. There's so much energy behind a pressure wave that it moves faster than the local speed of sound. Um, but um, in any case, uh, a shock wave involves a case where something is traveling faster than the speed of sound for a particular medium. When this happens, let's say an object traveling faster than the speed of sound, okay? It generally is gonna give off pressure waves under most circumstances, all right? But if it's traveling fast enough, these pressure waves can't get out of the way fast enough and begin to build up in a cone that we know to be a sonic boom, okay? Now again, think about throwing a, a pebble in a pond. It's gonna create circular waves that are gonna radiate in all directions, okay? If I kept creating this pressure disturbance and I was able to go faster than the speed of sound, again, I would end up with this conical wave front. All right? And we actually have this in more situations than you'd actually uh, think. Now, what does this conical wave front look like? This, this um, sonic boom or shock wave? Well, it makes an angle theta where sine of theta is equal to V divided by Vs. Now, if V is less than, I'm sorry, Vs is less than V, okay? You can't have, um, you know, sine greater than one, you'll get no solution, you'll get no shock wave. If V equals Vs, then sine of theta for one has theta equaling 90 degrees. So just as something's breaking the speed of sound, we would see a flat shock wave right in front of it. As it goes faster, the shock wave becomes more and more narrow as the cone gets thinner and thinner, okay? Now, um, what we're seeing right here, let's say this is like a bullet traveling through the air and it's producing its own little shock wave in front of it, all right? This angle looks to be about 30 degrees. We know that the sine of 30 degrees is one half. And that tells us that the uh, source is moving about twice the speed of the um, speed of sound, what we call Mach 2. So again, this is what the shock waves look like. Um, here are the planes, you know, probably going a bit slower. It's going probably about Mach, I don't know, maybe about 1.4, because that angle looks like it's about uh, 45 degrees. But again, um, the uh, angle that it makes tells you a lot about how fast it's going. Here is a bullet, and this is taken with what's known as a Schlieren um, photograph. Um, again, this is about a 30 degree angle. We clearly see, you know, it's creating this, this shock wave at about 30 degrees. We start out with this equation right here. Again, you take the sine of 30 degrees. If it's 341 meters per second for the speed of sound, this bullet is, yeah, traveling about Mach 2, 682 meters per second. All right. We don't just see this for sound waves. We actually see this for um, the wakes from boats. And this, um, does this look about 30 degrees? Maybe, maybe a little bit more, maybe 40 degrees. Well, as long as the boat is going faster than the speed that surface waves can travel, it'll produce what's called 
a bow wave completely disappears when you go slower than that. If you've ever been in a boat, you'll see no wake zones. They're just telling you, make sure that your boat is going slower than the speed of the surface waves. All right, right here, looks like they're going about two times the uh, speed of the surface waves, and that's why you get a 30 degree wake. For a jet going supersonic, and uh, I got to see this over the summer, this is really neat. They were doing an air show at Stewart uh, Air Force Base, which is uh, about a half an hour from me. Um, but these, these planes go so fast to turn around, they travel miles. With this, you get a shock wave in front of the aircraft, but you also get um, more complex behavior than you'd expect. We get a sudden spike in the pressure, and that's because the air can't get out of the way of the shock wave. It will then decrease to a certain amount and actually go below equilibrium as it's going behind, as the air behind the uh, plane doesn't have enough time to catch up, okay? So you get a lower pressure uh, behind that. So what you feel on the ground is the plane flies overhead. You see it, but you like, I don't hear anything. It's not until this first shock wave arrives that you feel um, the increase in pressure, the sonic boom, okay? Then you begin to hear the plane. And after it leaves, the pressure drops. So once again, it goes from um, normal, normal pressure. Suddenly we get a spike in pressure, so a high pressure, then a low pressure falling behind that. And this is what blows out windows. You, know, you think about a window, right? A plane flies overhead. The window is pushed in by the front of the wave and then it's pulled out by the leaving wave. So supersonic um, speeds are not permitted over uh, most populated areas due to this effect. And here you can actually see the shock wave. Now this is actually a few different phenomena happening all at once. The Increase in pressure can't be seen. Okay, that's actually in front of this. The decrease in pressure forms a cloud. Okay, so that's the trailing edge of the sonic boom. Okay, when we compress air, we suddenly increase the temperature. We call this adiabatic compression. The temperature goes up. So this high pressure um, heats the air to a higher temperature. Then all of a sudden, the low pressure goes by and the temperature goes down drastically. Now clouds form whenever we cool the air below the vapor, uh, I'm sorry, the dew point, um, we form a cloud. So this jet right here is forming its own cloud behind it by using its shock wave, its um, supersonic speed, to uh, cool the air. Again, this is flying a little bit past Mach 1.4. Cool to see that. Again, so shock waves form whenever we travel faster than a medium, okay? It can be a surface wave. If we exceed the speed of the surface waves, we get a bow wave. We see this behind boats all the time. Um, if it's in air, we call this a sonic boom. It's when we go faster than the speed of sound in the air. Now there's one interesting effect that we see in Hollywood all the time, and it's called Shrenkov radiation. And this happens when something goes faster than the speed of light, okay? So do you ever see that, uh, you know, somebody's radioactive and they're glowing. Um, you know, sometimes they're even glowing blue. <clears throat> All right, Hollywood's great. Here's a real reactor and this blue glow comes from Sherenkov radiation. Beta particles, which are super fast electrons are traveling very close to C, which is the speed of light in a vacuum. But they're actually in water which has a slightly slower speed, okay? 
Speed of light in a vacuum is 3.0 times 10 to the eight meters per second. Speed of light in water is more like two, I'm sorry. Two point five times ten to the eight meters per second. So maybe they're traveling like two point nine zero times ten to the eight meters per second. As they go through the water, these charged particles produce not not a pressure wave, but an electromagnetic wave. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, I'm using blue here, and that. Electromagnetic front is what we call Cherenkov radiation, okay? So here's the fact of the matter. If you could actually see a blue glow like this, that was just out in open air, you have received a lethal dose of radiation. To see that much blue glow, um, that is not survivable, all right? So um, in film, if you ever see a, a blue glow, and actually, if you watch, if you watch the series Chernobyl, and they showed the plant, and um, during the core explosion, you know they talked about this blue shaft of light which went up into the sky. That was radiation from the core, um, where the um, electrons were going faster than the speed of light in air. Okay. Um, we can also see Cherenkov radiation with uh, cosmic rays. When you hit the top of the atmosphere, a cosmic ray can go from a single particle to many different particles, okay? You create what's called a particle shower. And detectors on the ground will look for the shower. Um, it's either a, a large nucleus or, or a very intense gamma ray. It'll look for a shower of particles to try to retrace what exactly that particle that hit the top of the atmosphere was. Okay, but again, that's another example of something going faster than the speed that a wave will travel. 